Uh, so yeah. Uh, what else? I feel like I had a lot more to talk about, and, and as usual, I know that when I end this, I'm going to remember those things. But um, yeah, I have a lot of stuff to put in, like this clip smash. I actually have this one. Well, I have a bunch of clip smashes to make because they're going to be more than 15 minutes. But I have this one uh, that I got like. <laughs> It was like halfway through our trip there in in Oregon. I I caught a weed. I got I saw a weed deal happening. Well, first this girl was like talking into her phone, like she would talk. She, I don't know what the fuck she was doing. I don't know, or maybe she was just one of those like crazy girls that like always talks on speaker, but like keeps the speaker up to her face. But she would like talk into the mic. I wish I could find my phone. I'd have a lot to show you guys if I could find my fucking phone. But he would. She would just like let's pre just pretend this is a tiny version of my phone. She would like she, like the microphone's right here. She would put the microphone up to her, and I was seeing it from behind. Like I'm three stories up, and she's down in a thing, like on the grass. And but I'm seeing her from behind, and I see her putting the phone up to her mouth and her jaw moving. But then she puts the microphone in her ear, and she's like, uh huh. And she puts the microphone back in her mouth. So eventually, I start recording this, and this guy walks in, and he clearly pulls out like a bag, like a small, like like just dime sack of weed, so it gives it to her, and I, I just make this big racket by pulling off this, like the 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 window screen, and they look up, and he's wearing some hipster glasses. I'm like, nice shades, bruh. <laughs> just this fucking camera. It was it was a very funny back and forth, and he tells me to come down there at some point, so I stopped the video, and I went down there, and he wasn't there. They had left, <laughs> but. Uh, it was, it was good. Uh, so I don't know if I should put that in, like, a clip smash or if I should just make that a video itself. But yeah, I got, I got, um, a bunch of stuff to upload, just videos I've taken on my phone. Um, also I built, I rebuilt my micro T. I don't know if you remember that RC, but I rebuilt that, like, a month or two ago at my uncle's house over the course of, like, a week. I've got a video to do of that to upload. Um, been working on, I don't know if you, if you... Oh yeah, you probably saw the exhaust video, but I've been, if, if you're not friends with me on Facebook or whatever, uh, I'll just put my build link in the description. I've been going pretty fucking crazy with the B, like to the point that I'm almost able, like I'm almost going to retire my, my, I'm almost going to retire her as, as, as my daily car. Because like once I put this, once I put this body kit on it, I am not going to be able to drive it everywhere in Houston because Houston is just, it just, mm -mm. This place is a goddamn death race everywhere. Just by the, I mean, just not even just how, like how mean the drivers are and stuff. Just the roads, they destroy your car. Like I have to, even though I like ri riding with my car lowered, I have to raise it to like, like almost higher than stock height a lot of the times to drive on some of these fucking roads. Just because you fucking scrape everywhere. I, I remember even at stock height, I would scrape some places back before I'd even started doing anything to my car. When I was just on stock springs. I would scrape some places, and I was like, holy shit. But when we, when we went up to Oregon, I don't think we ever hit a bump. I remember we were going through one, like, intersection with Owen, and we went over this little bump, and he was like, whoa, fucking crazy-ass med... I was like, that's every road in Houston. But I remember just the taxi we took from the flight onto, onto the, um... Onto the, uh... uh and from the taxi that we did from the flight to the Medford Air from the Medford Airport to the Ashland Hotel we were staying at, um, it was so smooth. Like I didn't. It was like we glid there. Glid, glided, glided doesn't sound right either. It was like we glid there. At glid, ha, <laughs> glid. It was, but it was really like we floated there. Like, and I and I, I'm. Mm, I don't know if I should say this. Uh, I'm not, but I have some big news coming up regarding Oregon. I just don't want to say it because I don't want everybody to know. And anyway, so, yeah, just the roads were so fucking nice. They were so fucking nice. And I was like, God damn. But yeah, then we don't have that here. So, uh, like I said, I, once I put this body kit on there so that I can touch the ground when I lower it all the way, I still got to put some, I got some, uh, teen uh, T I E N rear springs to go in the back, but then I realized they aren't compatible with the airlift bags I have, so I gotta get some just regular like I gotta get some struts from some year of the Toyota Echo, so that I because I'm able to lower the front just like an inch and a half more than I can the back, so when I completely air out the bags, it like it looks it like leans forward a little bit, which most 
bees, which most like top tier bees do, because they have camber in the rear, like where the where the wheels go out. So like because of that, it's propped up in the back more than they w- than it would be in the front anyway. But I need anyway. I need to put some springs there before I put the body kit on. And the body kit I'm going to put on is the Charge Speed Way Out kit. And if you look it up, it looks kind of silly. But look up Z-Man's XB on Club XB, and uh, you'll see what I'm aiming for. I'm just going for a white version of that. But I have I, I ordered the BB uh, bumper. It actually got here on the 16th, and they're currently painting it and, and, and repairing the scuffs it has on it. But I have a legit Japanese BB bumper to put on my XB. That's pretty awesome. If you look up Todd Nakanashi's XB, which is my favorite one, period, um, is his bumper. But he has, he has an aftermarket lip on it that he has like molded into there. It looks all custom. Well, it is custom, but he has it like fiberglass into it. It looks really cool. But um, I'm just gonna put like some garage liner there so that I can touch the ground when I lower it. But I, like even scraping won't damage anything because it's just garage liner, which sounds tacky, but it actually looks really nice. If you look up garage liner lips, it looks really nice. It looks like it looks it looks like it's supposed to be there. Um, so I'm gonna put that BB bumper on the front. With this cute little bumper pull I have, it's like a little antenna that comes up that's like a switch in the car. It's just to give you. They they usually have it in um, Japan, to, because t- parking is always so tight and stuff. It gives you a good sense of where the front of your car is. It's just an antenna that comes out of the bumper. But I got one of those. It's just cute. It has like a little light on the front that comes on with your headlights. So I'm putting that on there with the BB bumper and the garage liner. And the garage liner not only will that make it so that when I can touch the ground, but um, it will match the charge speed skirts and rear bumper that I'm going to put on there um, in height. Because if I didn't put the garage liner, then the front bumper would be higher off the ground than the rest. But I guess I'd want that if I would ever put camber on, huh? But everybody hates fucking camber for some reason. I really like the way it looks. It gives it like a more aggressive stance. But a lot of people say it's pretty ricey to put camber on, so and I don't want to seem ricey. Um, like if you notice my, my sound I have in that... Uh, in the sound of my exhaust clip in my previous video, I, that was really hard to do because I was aiming to be. I wanted it to sound not. I wanted it to sound good and feel nice when I drive it, but I didn't want it to be so high pitched that it sounded ricey. But I didn't want it to be so low and like hard that I sounded like a goddamn Bugatti behind you. Um, so it was it was hard. So I went with like a DC intake or a DC muffler and stuff, and I took the silencer out. I didn't install it um, all. It was most of it was done by uh, my friend Chris. Um, who's another member on the forum, and uh, but he did some pretty good work on the engine and stuff. But we got that all in there, and um, yeah, it's actually his guys that are doing my bumper right now, and uh, they're a little slow, but uh, they seem to do good work. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put that on there. But yeah, I was thinking like, huh, now that I think about it, if I don't, like, if I do put camber on, well, I can just remove the garage liner later. Um, what else? But yeah, I'll put my I'll put my build link in the description. It's it's coming along really fucking cool, and it's getting to the point that, like I said, I'm gonna have to retire her as a daily car, and I'm I'm thinking of moving on to a, a Golf from uh, like like the MK5. I'll link the one that I'm that I'm going off of too. It's this guy. I think his name's AJ. Um, fuck, you gotta see this guy's crazy Golf. Um, why am I still holding this thing? Um, Oh, I'll link it anyway. Uh, oh yeah, right here. Uh, AJ AJ Gotrin. If you look up his MK5 Golf, that looks really nice with those Enkies. And I was thinking of moving on to that car as my daily car in Houston. Um, and just having the B is just like my crazy custom hardcore. I mean, I would still do a lot of work to the to the Golf, but. Um, can't go as crazy with the suspension and all that but that's what makes it look so cool is how low it is when it sits so I don't know I don't know I don't know hopefully they make a Tesla that I can afford by then I don't know but uh what else what else what else um I think that's it I think this has been a good update um, again, I know as soon as I end this, I'll think of more than I wanted to talk about. Is there anything that happened during my flights that was cool? No, I don't think so. The flights were pretty normal. Got there safely. Got back. 
Um. I think that's about it. We can chill for another five minutes. I mean, fuck it. YouTube's not going to get mad at me for adding another five minutes, I hope. Oh, shit. Fail. I've been trying to hook this thing up. I, I hooked it up when I first got it in the high rise, but after I threw my fit with making music and all that, I haven't gotten back to it. This, and I never really learned how to use it all the way this uh, thing. <clears throat> it's really just a just an intake controller. And it looks a lot more complicated than it is. Well, you can do some pretty crazy shit with it, but I don't... I don't... I got it as a Christmas gift from my uncle, so I don't... I also have a keyboard that I've never used. I've had that forever since I was like a kid. I don't even remember how I got it. But yeah. I still fuck music. I still like doing everything a cappella. And I feel like if you can make something sound good a cappella, that's even harder. Um, I just really hate making beats and like recording and then doing all the all the fucking I just like hitting record and doing the shit and then uploading it there's this guy you need to check out on YouTube he's just a really genuine guy like if you like my videos for the reason that I feel like I would like my videos um, you need to check this guy out um, his name is Joe the Disney guy and he's just this really genuine, he seems like a really nice, awesome dude who, he has a couple videos up and he just, he's, he's, he seems a little bit older than me, but he, he really, he seems to have a really nostalgic attachment to, uh, Disney movies. Um, and he does a lot of stuff that, that, he, he just does reviews and stuff on, on a lot of Disney films that, that, that people from my generation have seen, like, uh, like Brink. He does shit like that. He just and, and he just like thorough good reviews. They're not biased, and he he just seems like a really humble, chill dude. And he just started, um, and I'd love for him to have. I mean, I know I don't have that many viewers anymore, but like I would really like it if you guys would go check him out and and say what's up to Joe the Disney guy. Um, you don't even have to say I sent you. I mean, I, was, I don't care. It's, he just seems like a really. I, I I want him to get some attention. I don't want him to stop making videos because he doesn't feel like people care. You know what I'm saying? Because that's there, I've seen a lot of people, really genuinely good people, stop making videos because it, they felt like nobody gave a shit. Um, and I don't want this guy to be that way. His name's so his name is Joe the Disney guy, and I and I hope you go check him out. He's very nice. Um, um, also, Squeezy Jibs, I'm sure you've heard of. Even if you haven't heard of him or subscribed to him, I'm sure you've seen a video. Squeezy Jibs is fucking crazy. I've been subscribed to him forever. I'm gonna do. A, I've been meaning to do a video for all, for years on just like listing all the YouTubers that I really that I'm really into. Um, but uh, but um, Squeezy, he has a. He's like this character on YouTube of just this. Re <laughs> he's always trying to tell. The, he's always trying to sell this too fast, too furious muffler. <laughs> <And> <laughs> <laughs> just thinking of <laughs> Squeezy, uh, dude. <laughs> just go watch any Squeezy video. This guy is a fucking brit. But like for the longest time, I I thought he, that was really him. Like that's how good he is and how persistent he's been with it. But he just records himself doing this Squeezy character. But eventually, I found his through that uh, a couple years after, which was like last year. I found his real channel. Uh, it's Tim Savage. And uh, if you like my videos at all, you'll fucking love Tim Savage. That dude is the shit. Uh, he's like everything I want to grow to be. Like, that guy is awesome. And I want to thank him very much if he ever sees this, um, for any reason. Um, I want to thank him very much for the video he did on uh, introversion and being an introvert. Um, he made me feel... Now he, not only did I identify what I was through that video, or at least a, a part of what I am... Uh, but he, he helped me be okay with it. So I gotta end this pretty abruptly and I'm sorry for that. But uh, thank you very much, Tim Savage, if you ever see this. But uh, he does like a whole chain video on that and, and like how to deal with it. And it is awesome. But go, Tim Savage, and he just has so he's such a great storyteller. Him and Paul's ego. Um, so yeah, I gotta go. I got like 10 seconds left. So uh, you guys have a good one. I'll, uh, I'm going to see Tech tomorrow and it'll be good times. Have a good night.